It's made international news headlines. A senior politician from India's Congress Party has been found guilty of inciting crowds to kill six during the 1984 anti-Sikh riots. Sajjan Kumar is the first ever high-profile politician to be jailed for life for encouraging violence against the Sikhs. More than 3,000 Sikhs were killed following the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1984 by her Sikh bodyguards after she sent the army to the Golden Temple to flush out militants. Um, Now, if you go to the BBC News website, you can get more coverage on this. And the reason we want to talk about this is over the past 34 years that Sikhs across the world have been fighting to get justice for this particular massacre in 1984. And a lot of the actual uh, protests have been always held here in London. Sikhs from across the country will come to London to mark 1984 and call for justice. Well, to find out more, we're joined now on the line by Jasveer Singh, who is the senior press officer of the Sikh Press Association. Jasveer, pleasure to have you on the show this evening. Thanks for having me on, guys. Um, I've got to start off by asking you, what does this particular um, arrest actually mean for Sikhs who have waited 34 years for justice? Is this justice now that Sajjan Kumar uh, is the first high-profile politician to be jailed for life because of what happened in 1984? Um, There are a lot of mixed feelings about um, the conviction of Sajjan Kumar. Uh, In regards to is it justice, there's the old saying that justice delayed is justice denied. I believe uh, Martin Luther King said that. Mm. Um, And and that sentiment does definitely run throughout the Sikh community in regards to kind of Kumar's um, conviction, uh, which happened last week. I mean, in the last 34 years, we need to remember that there's countless uh, people that have passed away without seeing any kind of light after having gone through that period of the Sikh genocide of 1984 and witnessing people being burnt alive, witnessing the rape of countless women, Mm. witnessing the callous murder of young children. So um, it's hard to actually call this justice. But um, is it ever... So should he just be walking free right now? So uh, if if it's not looked upon as justice, so uh, whoever's uh, been trying to get him to this point and have held him accountable, uh, uh, was that just a waste of time by the individuals? Not at all. Um, right. H.S. Fulcar, who is behind it, I mean, he can only be commended for his continuing um, steadfastness in regards to his activism. Um, but in the sense of he's been free for 34 years, if somebody committed a crime 34 years ago and for 34 years they've been not just free, but actually um, out in the high upper echelons of Indian society and living better than probably 99% of the country, mm. um, I mean, it's hard to really call that justice. Now, obviously, so let's that ask you, mean... let's ask you this then, Jasper. Yeah. If, if, you know, we've seen that the social media reaction to this, yeah. a lot of people feel it is too little, too late. There are those yeah. that feel at least at this point, finally, there has been one conviction. But what does this mean for other people responsible for the Sikh genocide of 1984? Surely this would mean then that there will be more convictions for the thousands of people who come on a yearly basis to London to raise awareness of what happened in 1904 in Delhi. Um, as you've mentioned, 3,000 Sikhs were killed. Um, they very much were targeting males. So a lot of what we now find is if you go to particular parts of Delhi, you will have colonies where widows have been left yeah. with brothers, fathers and sons brutally murdered. So I guess the question now is rather than going on about justice, are we going to get more convictions? Is that the way that we get justice? What happens for those individuals who have been waiting 34 years? See, that, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked because it's also part of the reason why many, many Sikhs, as you can see for yourself, if anyone wants to look at the reaction on social media, just feel that this is kind of too little, too late, although it's still something. Mm. Um, a, a great example of uh, what else is going on in regards to those that are similarly accused is the fact that on the same day that Sajjan Kumar was convicted, somebody else, another politician called Gamal Nath, was, uh, who is similarly um, accused and has mass witnesses that say he led mobs to massacre Sikhs during mm-hmm. 1984, during the Sikh genocide of 1984, he was actually elected the chief minister of the state of uh, Madhya Pradesh in mm-hmm. India on the same day. So you can see that there's not really a lot of kind of um, synchronization in this kind of pursuit of, of justice. Uh, and there's other names out there, most famously Jagdish Taitla, who again, you know, there's no 
movements that I'm aware of um, through all my research that show that he is coming closer to being brought to some sort of version of justice. And that's why this um, conviction of Sajin, uh, Sajin Kuma is actually looked at by a lot of people who understand Indian politics um, better than I do anyway, uh, that it might just even be a gimmick for the upcoming elections mm. next year where the BJP government want to um, you know, kind of like put the Congress party in um, a bad light by bringing this up again and, and making a big deal out of it. Because let's also remember, Sajjan Kumar is not in jail yet. He's filed for an appeal. In India, appeals can last up to 10 years, if not longer. So, right. you know, we're, we're not sure where this is going. So really. in the new year, can we get you in and then maybe have a proper discussion around this and how to move forward, uh, I guess, or how the community is moving forward from this? Most definitely. All We'd right. love to. And, you know, thanks, as always, for, for giving us the platform to discuss this, because London has been at the heart of a lot of protests pro and, and demonstrations about this issue and will continue to be so. Thank you for joining us tonight, Jasveer. Jasveer Singh, uh, who is the senior press officer for the Sikh Press Association. Uh, and we definitely will. I think this is a discussion that needs to be had in the new year. So we will follow up on it. But as uh, Jasveer says, if you want further details, I'd actually recommend head to Sikh Press Association website and uh, you can find out the regular updates that you have there.